Characters who rarely drive or do not appear so often have unremarkable cars and don't always have the same vehicle. This is likely to be due to using what is available rather than any script or artistic preference. But, as we will see, there are some notable exceptions. Even in the first scene of the pilot, there's a vehicle. Compo is behind with his TV rental payments, so two men turn up in a van to collect the set. Their van is a red 1970 Simca 1100. The next time the TV rental shop visit, in the Series 2 episode, Some Enchanted Evening, the TV engineer is in a 1972 Simca 1100 van. In 1972, a brand new Simca van cost £744 on the road, with six months road tax, and a full tank of petrol. Very few Simca cars were sold in the UK. Hearses are naturally associated with funerals, and in summer wine this was often the case, but not just for Compo's funeral. But in some episodes, their use is less obvious. Twelve different hearses appeared in the show. In the pilot episode, we see Clegg taking advantage of a passing Wolseley hearse to tow him along on his bicycle on his way to tend the grave of his late wife. In the Series 4 episode, Flower Power Cut, a speeding hearse nearly runs Clegg over. Then in the Series 6 episode, one of the last few places unexplored by man, the trio and Wally get a lift in a hearse to transport Nora's wardrobe. For the December 1983 special Getting Sam Home, a hearse and two funeral cars with consecutive registration numbers carry Sam and mourners to his funeral. In the Series 10 episode, The Day of the Welsh Ferret, the trio attend the funeral of George, who has a 1984 Ford Cardinal hearse and a 1984 Ford Granada funeral car. There are more hearses and funeral cars in the Series 14 episode, The Phantom of the Graveyard, and the December 2002 special, A Musical Passing for a Miserable Muscroft, also features a hearse and funeral car. Many people will not have noticed that the Series 3 episode The Kink in Foggy's Niblick featured an international film and TV star, uh, but not an actor, a car. At the golf club, Clegg and Compo watch a prestige car arrive and the driver goes into the clubhouse. The car is a 1967 Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow Mark I. At the time of making summer wine, the car was owned by Kingsbury Motor Hire in London. They provided all types of vehicles to the film and TV industry. The company closed in 1982 and this Rolls-Royce was then sold to a prestige car dealership in Devon. One of its next owners was a wedding limousine company. In 2012, Pastel Legere in France wanted to buy a classic Rolls-Royce. He did some research and travelled to a car dealership in Kent, England. He found this car, bought it and drove it home to France. Then he discovered its history, including a link to Yorkshire. It had originally been the demonstrator for Robert Massey's garage in Market Wayton in East Yorkshire. In the 1940s, they were the main Rolls-Royce dealer in Yorkshire. Pascal managed to acquire some of the original paperwork with the car, including a copy of a BBC memo regarding damaged cars while it was involved in the making of an episode of Doctor Who. Then Pascal discovered his car is one of the most famous Rolls-Royces in film and television history. It has featured in at least 34 TV shows and movies, including an episode of Doctor Who Story, Day of the Daleks, the Chandelier episode, A Touch of Glass in Only Fools and Horses, the very first episode of Minder, and The Persuaders with Roger Moore and Tony Curtis. With so many farms in the area, it's not surprising that tractors appear in a few episodes. Several of the tractors seen were made by the David Brown Tractor Company. It's appropriate that David Brown tractors appeared in the show as they were built near Homefirth here at what was the Meltham Mills Works, which is now the home of the David Brown Tractor Club Museum. David Brown started the business with Harry Ferguson in 1936 at the David Brown Gear Factory in Huddersfield. This is their first production tractor, the Ferguson Brown Type A, which pioneered the concept of including a hydraulic lift and converging three-point linkage, which soon became a fundamental part of farm tractor design the world over. Production moved here to the Melton Works 
but Ferguson left and joined Henry Ford in America. David Brown bought Aston Martin in 1947 and in 1948 bought La Gonda. The DB in the Aston Martin DB models is for David Brown. By the 1970s, the David Brown company had become Britain's third largest farm tractor manufacturer and four out of every five tractors produced were sold overseas. In 1972, the tractor business was acquired by an American corporation and by 1988, the production of tractors at Meltham had ceased completely. Foggy is keen to help the vicar in the series four episode, Jubilee. The trio and Sid end up on a carnival float towed by a tractor driven by the vicar's wife. She is not familiar with the operation of the classic 1960s David Brown 990 implantic tractor, similar to this one, and accidentally activates the trailer tilt mechanism causing Sid and most of the decorations to fall off the float. Although this tractor bears the case brand name, it is a David Brown model made after the American takeover. The black and white colour scheme of this model earned it the nickname Magpie. A tractor like this was towing the muck spreader in the series 10 episode Dancing Feet when Seymour hitched Edith's car to it for a tow. They got a tow and the generous helping of muck, much to Edith's disgust. Reggie Unsworth knows how to make an entrance. Apart from Compo's secret love interest still having a cover girl figure age 70, her day-to-day -day transport is this 1965 David Brown 990 Implomatic tractor. The cab was added recently. Reggie doesn't have a black outfit for the funeral, so in the series 21 episode, Just a Small Funeral, Clegg and Truly accompany Reggie on the tractor to get a dress from Auntie Wainwrights. The first time we see Wally and Nora out for a ride with the motorbike and sidecar is in the Series 7 episode, Cheering Up Ludovic. The bike is a 1954 Royal Enfield 700cc Meteor. We see them again in this combination two episodes later. Royal Enfield was the brand name of the Enfield Cycle Company of Redditch, Worcestershire, the business closed in 1978, but the Royal Enfield name lives on in an unrelated business in India. The bike Wally used has been exported, so might be still on the road somewhere in the world. From the 1984 Christmas special, The Loxley Lozenge, Wally has a different motorbike and sidecar. It's a 1960 BSA 600cc M21 with a red tank. At the time it was used in the show, it was owned by a film and TV prop supplier. It also appeared in the ITV soap Emmerdale and the Granada TV series Brothers McGregor. The bike is still on the road. Since it was used in the show, it's had some restoration work done and the tank was repainted black. The emergency vehicles used in film and television are usually rented from agencies that provide everything from police motorbikes to fire engines. A total of 27 police cars made 87 appearances. When filming on the road there are special requirements, for example action vehicles are allowed to use blue lights but not sirens, they must be added as a sound effect in the editing process. The first time we see a police car in the show is the December 1983 special Getting Sam Home. It's a plain white Ford Escort Mark III. It has basic police lettering with an illuminated police sign and rotating beacon on the roof. In the next 16 series, we only see the police with a car 21 times, and each series they're in a different car. From series 25, the police are more involved, making appearances in nearly every episode with a different car for each series, except in series 30 and 31 they have the same car. From series 24, they always have an authentic looking Vauxhall Astra. The police cars, usually driven by our regular PCs, are the most accident prone vehicles in the show. We don't usually see the impact, it's usually heard happening off screen. 
Remember, it's a BBC comedy production on a limited budget, so rather than a real impact, the vehicles are carefully positioned to give the impression of an accident from specific camera angles. One accident we did see was the mangle crashing through the roof of the police car in the Series 11 episode Three Men and a Mangle. Our regular PCs never seem to arrest anyone for causing these accidents. As far as it is possible to determine, none of the cars used as police vehicles in the show are still on the road, although some of their registration numbers have been transferred to other vehicles. We first see Crusher's 1977 Citroen 2CV in the Series 8 episode, Who's Looking After the Café Then? It features in two episodes of Series 9 and the special Big Day at Dream Acres. Perhaps you didn't notice, it was two different cars. The first one was white, and then in Series 9 we see the yellow version. Both cars now seem to have been scrapped. Howard's usual mode of transport is a bicycle, but on four occasions he buys a vehicle. The first is a blue, 1975 Ford Transit van in Big Day at Dream Acres. Pearl is suspicious of Howard's motives for buying the van and she warns him what she would do to him if it ever smelt of cheap perfume. In the series 19 episode, Nowhere in Particular, his second vehicle was a white 1981 Renault T35D Master van. This is a secret van, the most widely known secret in the area as it turned out. Wesley services it and makes it comfortable inside, but Howard never gets the benefit of the soft furnishings. However, Marina and Compo did. Howard has another secret vehicle in the Series 28 episode, Variations on a Theme of Road Rage. He buys a green 1998 Rover 414 car, believing that the owner has passed away. The owner is far from dead, just separated from his wife that sold it and seeing Howard driving the car begins what was probably the most casual car chase ever seen on television. In the series 13 episode, Give Us A Lift, Foggy shoots at a telephone engineer with his walking stick. There is a genuine BT liveried Austin Maestro city van parked nearby. The episode was broadcast on the 25th of October 1991. The grey BT vehicles were first used in April 1991 when BT became the new trading name of British Telecommunications PLC, so they were keen for TV and film companies to use them as free publicity for the brand. Two entirely unrelated characters use the same red 1961 Morris Mini Traveller Mark I. In the series 13 episode, Pole Star, it is driven by a vicar and his wife who stop to look at the scenery. They are surprised to see two fishermen kissing, but it's Howard and Marina in one of their disguises. Then in the series 15 episode, The Black Widow, it is driven by the titular widow, Mrs. Jack Attercliffe, who has taken Clegg captive. The same car also appeared in the 1991 TV miniseries, GBH. In the series 15 episode, Aladdin Gets on Your Wick, Auntie Wainwright is branching out into mobile sales with a 1952 Bedford K-Series van converted into a mobile shop. Travelling shops of this type were popular in the 1940s, 50s and 60s. This van was used in the 1990s The Darling Buds of May TV series as a mobile fish and chip shop. It's currently awaiting repairs to make it roadworthy. Auntie Wainwright arrives on a bicycle to greet Wesley and the trio in her scrapyard in the series 17 episode, The Thing in Wesley's Shed. Later in the same episode, when Eli is visiting the scrapyard, she greets him on a trials motorbike. It resembles a Gas Gas TXT 250cc bike, but these were not manufactured until three years after the episode was made. Tom and Smiler persevere with Auntie's handcart for a long time before she agrees to get them a vehicle in the Series 27 episode, Plenty of Room in the Back. It really does have plenty of room. It's a 1935 Austin 6 hearse. 
The hearse was also used in an episode of the ITV show The Bill. The hearse is still being used for funerals, only you won't see it on the road in the UK. In about 2010, it was exported to Wanganui in New Zealand by Undertakers, Dempsey and Forrest. They call the hearse Agna, and it's become well known in the area, with families often requesting her by name. Agna's screen career continued in New Zealand, appearing in the 1930s era film Predicament. Finally, Auntie might have found a decent alternative to the handcart. Well, nearly. In the series 28 episode, The Crowcroft Challenge, Tom and Smiler are keen to see the new vehicle. It turns out to be a 1977 Crompton Electricars milk float that still has the dairy details painted on it. This vehicle makes eight appearances. In one episode of series 31, a similar older milk float is used, made by the Crompton Leyland Electric Cars Company in 1971, before British Leyland sold their interest in the business. Frighteningly, Eli Duckett has a vehicle. It's a red 1970 Morris 1100 Series 5 van. After the trio decline a lift, he drives off into a field and ploughs into a haystack, revealing Howard and Marina. This model of van was popular with the General Post Office for letter and parcel delivery and collection. Auntie Wainwright has taken a motorbike as part exchange in the December 1995 special A Leg Up for Christmas. She persuades Smiler to test drive it, dressed in full bike leathers with studded jacket. The bike is a 1977 Triumph Bonneville T140V, customised with high exhaust pipes and straight handlebars. By the end of the episode, Auntie has talked Smiler into buying the bike. In the series 25 episode, Spores, Tom decides that Smiler needs to improve his appeal to women. Tom says he needs a nice little sporty vehicle that's going to totally transform his image. Instead of which, he ends up with a tatty white 1972 Chevrolet Impala convertible. It only appears in series 25 and 26, I suspect a combination of its size and likely mechanical problems made it too much of a liability to continue using. 1972 was the final year that Chevrolet made the Impala as a convertible. Fully restored models are selling for about $30,000 in America. There are only about 160 Impalas in the UK. Barry visits Auntie Wainwright's shop looking for something pretty and feminine for Glenda's birthday in the December 1996 special Extra Extra. Moments later, Auntie is persuading him to buy a scruffy looking 1960s Lambretta LI125cc scooter. As Barry rides it home, he passes Edie in her car with Glenda who wants to know why he's not bought one for her, but she's disappointed later when he actually gives it to her. In the series 23 episode, a brief excursion in the fast lane Glenda visits Auntie Wainwright for something to distract Barry from fast machines. Moments later, she's wearing motorbike leathers and a helmet. When Glenda turns up to see Barry, she's riding a 1999 Honda CBR600F motorbike capable of a top speed of 156 miles an hour. In the series 18 episode, The Lovemobile, we meet Ethel and Lance for the first time, complete with the titular Lovemobile Caravan and their gold 1986 two-litre Ford Granada Mark III, which is just as broken down as their relationship. The Granada Mark III was voted European Car of the Year in 1986. Eleven years later, Ethel and Lance return in the series 29 episode, All That Glitters Is Not Elvis. Their relationship is just as turbulent as before, and they have an even older car, a classic brown 1972 Mark III Ford Cortina 2000 GT. While having one of their arguments, Lance manages to break the driver's door handle. The car is still on the road today and is seen here at a classic car show in 2014. The Cortina was Britain's top selling car in the 1970s. Before Howard gets his secret van, Marina invests in a vehicle of her own. In the series 18 episode, A Sidecar Named Desire, Howard has heard that Marina has had an offer of marriage, but he's misheard that she had an offer of a garage for her custom yellow 1982 
Austin Morris Mini Shorty. Not that this car needs a garage, it would probably fit in a shoebox. While the Mini is a small car, this customised two-seater is even smaller. The relative low cost and wide ability of Minis makes them ideal for enthusiasts to make modifications like this. While trying to make an early morning escape, Ronnie, the groom, in the December 1997 special There Goes the Groom, steals the milk float from a milkman played by Chris Akabusi. It was a 1978 Smith's milk float with Dale Farm Dairy livery. The Olympic medal winning athlete didn't even try and chase after his milk float. In his first four appearances from the Series 21 episode From Here to Paternity, Tom has a battered yellow 1988 Renault Traffic T1000 van, showing signs of the original white paint after a sloppy respray. Wesley repairs the exhaust, despite Tom being indifferent to his assistance. Tom's associate, Mrs Avery, drives a converted 1977 Bristol single-decker bus in From Here to Paternity, then in the next three episodes it's parked in a field where they're living in it. This bus is one of 15 purchased by Eastern Counties Omnibus Company in 1977, originally painted in their blue livery. It was repainted white and was still in use as a living van in 2013. In the series 21 episode, Wagoner's Roll, we discover Mrs Avery has a red 1992 Honda motorbike. It's only a 125cc model, so more of a commuter bike than a sports bike. Tom persuades Mrs Avery to drive a Ford Transit minibus to take the ladies on a day out in the series 22 episode, The Missing Bus of Mrs Avery. It ends up being more of a mystery tour than planned. Another of Tom's get-rich-quick without making any effort schemes involves Mrs Avery fitting carpets. In the series 22 episode, Enter the Hawk, Tom has provided her with a 1992 Ford Transit Mark II van. It rolls down the hill with Billy Hardcastle sitting on the roof. Although we'd never seen him drive a car before, in the series 24 episode, Ancient Eastern Wisdom and Introduction, Tom turns up at Clegg's in need of a hiding place for his green 1999 Deo Lanus. He hides it under a tarpaulin to try and fool repo man Herman Teasdale. In the series 21 episode, Getting Barry's Goat, repo man Herman Teasdale makes his first appearance in a year 2000 Red Rover 25 16 valve car. What appears to be this car is parked outside the church hall in the series 22 episode, Hey Big Vendor, but Herman's not in the episode, so this probably means a cast or crew member's car was used for Herman. The next time we see him, he has a 2001 Nissan Almera, and in all later appearances, he drives a Volkswagen Golf. For a character that only appears a few times, Billy Ingleton manages to turn up with three different vehicles. In the series 22 episode, The Coming of the Beast, he's driving a blue 1988 Austin Mini Mark V when Truly warns him there's a tiger on the loose. Later, we see him sitting on the roof of his car that is now partly submerged in a river. Giving Sir Norman another opportunity to show off his comic timing, in the December 2002 special, A Musical Passing for a Miserable Muscroft, he accidentally activates his fairground organ built into a 1965 Morris LD van while Muscroft's funeral is taking place. Billy does not need anything as dangerous as a tiger to distract him. In the series 25 episode, The General's Greatest Battle, just seeing Alvin struggling to carry the general leads him to plough his Ford Fiesta van through a coned off road work site. We first meet Electrical Entwistle and his pickup in the December 2002 special, A Musical Passing for a Miserable Muscroft. His red 1990 Toyota Hilux 4x4 diesel pickup appears in 65 episodes. Although there appear to be minor changes during its time on the show, it does seem to be the same vehicle throughout. It is already 12 years old when it's first seen, so liable to be showing signs of wear. Typical places like the edges of wheel arches have signs of rust, then get repaired. The rear left corner and light cluster show signs of damage in series 27 and 28. It looks like it had a complete respray before series 30. There is some overspray on the suspension and differential. Although after this time, the paintwork sometimes looks dull. This is likely to be due to the fresh paintwork reflecting the crew too much, and so it was dulled with a coat of hairspray. 
the vinyl lettering on the doors seems to disappear and reappear a few times. The lettering is removable, so perhaps it was sometimes forgotten. It is noticeable the top of the lettering is sometimes higher or lower in relation to the door handles. The Hilux was a good choice of vehicle for Entwistle. On the BBC TV Top Gear show, the presenters used various methods to try and destroy a 1988 Toyota Hilux, which included hitting it with a wrecking ball, setting it on fire and finally having it blown up. The heavily damaged but still drivable Hilux stood on a plinth in the Top Gear studio. It appears Entwistle's Hilux was probably scrapped in 2013. However, the cab section of the vehicle used for the green screen shots that have been left in storage in Homeforth since 2009 was cleaned up and seen in public again for the Summer Wine 50th anniversary weekend in May 2023. In the December 2002 special, A Musical Passing for a Miserable Muscroft, Toby Mulberry-Smith has a perfectly respectable brand new Rover 45 16-valve car. But in series 24 he's driving a one-year-old Seat Ibiza. Perhaps he's borrowed Mrs Mulberry-Smith's car. Things improve in series 25. He has a new £24,000 Mercedes C180. Then in series 27 he has another new car, but has gone for a cheaper model, a £16,000 Toyota Avensis T3S. However, in Series 30, having been thrown out by his wife, he's reduced to driving a second-hand 1998 Renault Megane. He seems to miss his beloved Jaguar car more than his wife. When we eventually see it in Series 30, the 2006 Jaguar XJ model would have cost him between forty and £75,000. In the Series 24 episode, a pickup of the later Ming Dynasty, Barry's car won't start, so Glenda calls the AA. The episode features a genuine 2001 Volkswagen Transporter T4 AA van. In the opening scene of the Series 24 episode, The Miraculous Curing of Old Goff Heliwell, Tom is hiding from the repo man in his shed at the allotment. A real Pizza Hut delivery moped delivers pizza to him as the repo man is sitting in a tree watching through binoculars. In the Series 25 episode An Apple A Day, the lad has wandered off, so Mr Scrooby suggests getting the car out to go and find him. Alvin hops in the sporty roadster, only to be disappointed when Scrooby reappears driving his 1928 Austin 7 Tourer. It might not have the acceleration of a modern sports car, but surely the offer of a ride in a vintage car must be considered a treat. At nearly a hundred years old, the car used in the show is still on the road. Nelly has four cars over five series, but her taste in vehicles is not as tame as it first seems. In two episodes of series 30, she and Pearl visit a shady location that's described by Hobbo as a biker's club. They reappear in black bike leathers and helmets, indistinguishable from the other bikers, and ride off on a 1996 Kawasaki GPZ500S. Mm -hmm.